Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Church in Bethesda. Today is Sunday, March 28, 2021. Today is Palm Sunday, 2021. We will kick off Holy Week this week, leading us into the Easter holiday. We have now rounded a year just recently with this pandemic that our world has been enduring. And every holiday from here on out will be a reminder of where we were when COVID first made landfall in the United States. I wanted to start off our worship today by saying thank you, by saying how grateful I am from those of you who watch here on Sundays from other states and countries to those of you who live here locally in the DMV. I wanna say thank you for your prayers, for your calls, for your texts, for your cards, for your financial support to our community. These things are the only reasons we've been able to keep doing good work in the world during such lean and lonely times. But above all, above everything else, I want to thank you for something that might seem strange to thank a person for. I want to thank you for, over this past year, being an active user of your eyes and your ears. Yes, you heard me correctly. Thank you for using your eyes and your ears. What most people in my line of work will never tell you is that the knowledge that we crave above all other knowledge is the knowledge to be able to clone ourselves. It seems like there is never enough time or space in the life of pastors to be out in our surrounding communities, seeing and hearing the needs of the people in them so that our churches can fulfill their purpose. And without your seeing eyes and your listening ears, we would be unaware of the ways that God wants to work through us. So today, I am most grateful to you for being out and about in your life, for looking and listening and loving and then bringing what you've found out back to us so that we can mobilize our efforts to bring help and healing and relief to people during times like these. C.S. Lewis once so perfectly said, the church is the only organization that exists primarily for the benefit of non-members. And that couldn't be any more true. We don't exist just for ourselves alone. We exist for a world outside of our walls that is hurting, that needs help, and that doesn't give that help based on someone showing us their membership card. I am so grateful to be a part of a church that believes these words and lives out these words on a daily basis from Lewis. And on a day like today, when we look back at the prior year, we continue to see how the hands of God have been at work and are still at work in our community. So thank you. As we go into worship today, let's center our hearts around what matters most who we are inside of those hearts and what that does in our outer lives as we live out what we believe in the world. Let's do that now as we enjoy some beautiful music from our talented singers and musicians. Hey. 
Everyone needs compassion A love that's never failing Let mercy fall on me Everyone needs forgiveness The kindness of a Savior The hope of nations Savior, He can move the mountains My God is mighty to save He is mighty to save Forever out of our salvation He rose in conquered the grave Jesus conquered the grave So take me as you find me All of my feet and fingers And feel my life again I give it my Everything I believe me Now I surrender Savior, He can move the mountain My God is mighty to see He is mighty to see Forever out of He is mighty to save forever Out of our salvation He rose and conquered the grave Jesus conquered the grave Next 
Thank you for that beautiful music, guys. Let's take a few moments now to pass the peace of Christ to one another here in this digital environment. Whatever platform you're joining us on, find the comments box or the reply box on the page. Let's greet one another now with the peace of Christ. Padre nuestro que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga a nosotros tu reino. Danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día y perdona nuestras ofensas como también nosotros perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. 
No nos dejes caer en tentación y líbranos del mal. Amén. Notre Père, qui es aux cieux, que ton nom soit sanctifié, que ton règne vienne, que ta volonté soit faite, sur la terre comme au ciel. Donne-nous aujourd'hui notre pain de ce jour. Pardonne-nous nos offenses, comme nous aussi nous pardonnons à ceux qui nous ont offensés. Ne nous induis pas en tentation, mais délivre-nous du mal, car c'est à toi qu'appartiennent, dans tous les siècles, le règne, la puissance et la gloire. Amen. Vater unser im Himmel, geheiligt werde dein Name, dein Reich komme, dein Wille geschehe, wie im Himmel, so auf der Erden. Aus unser tägliches Brot gib uns heute und vergib uns unsere Schuldigen. Und führe uns nicht in Versuchung, sondern erlöse uns von den Bösen. Denn dein ist das Reich und die Kraft, dein Kraft und die Heiligkeit in, in Ewigkeit. Amen. Onze Vader, die in de hemelen zijt, uw naam wordt geheiligd. Uw koninkrijk komen, uw wil geschieden, gelijk in de hemel, als ook op aarde. Geef ons heden ons dagelijks brood en vergeef ons onze schulden, gelijk ook wij vergeven onze schuldenaren. En leid ons niet in verzoeking, maar verlos ons van de boze. Want van u is het koninkrijk en de kracht en de heerlijkheid tot een eeuwigheid. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Well, welcome. If you're just now joining us, thanks for tuning in. My name is Ryan Phipps. This is Church in Bethesda. Let's get into our lesson for today. Today's lesson from the scriptures is a lesson that we hear every year on this date. Palm Sunday, or sometimes called the Liturgy of the Palms, is the day where we remember Jesus' entry into the city of Jerusalem, beginning Holy Week, the last week of Jesus' life, before he is betrayed, tortured, crucified, and buried. As I was studying this week, 
Something in the story that we hear every year stood out to me that I usually overlook. We know the story leading up to the verse. Jesus tells his disciples to go get a colt. They get it. They bring it back. They throw their coats on it for a makeshift saddle. Jesus gets on the colt and he and his disciples enter the city of Jerusalem through the east gate. And as they do, crowds of people are waiting for them. They begin laying down their coats for Jesus to ride over top of, and they're waving palm branches, shouting, Hosanna, 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 which means save us. And then the story recounts in our verse for today. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Have you ever seen that passage in this story before? I mean, I've seen it, but I've never really thought about what it means. Jesus' triumphal entry into the city of Jerusalem was a lightning quick visit. He was just dropping in. He enters the East Gate, also called the Lion's Gate, which is right here on a map. He takes a hard left. He goes into the temple. He looks around at everything, realizes that it's getting late, and then he goes back out of the temple, takes a hard right, and leaves the city to go to Bethany. In all of my years of study, I've never given this any attention. And yet, there's a very important lesson here in these oft overlooked words. Just as important as the palms, just as important as the cult and the crowds, just as important as the hosannas. When he had looked around at everything as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. And think about that in the retelling of this story, the way that we normally hear it. This story is often recounted to us as Jesus entering the city, the crowds are shouting Hosanna, and he goes into the temple, and then he starts flipping over tables and rebuking the officials for oppressing the poor. But this isn't what happened. Jesus enters the city. Yes, the crowds are shouting Hosanna. Yes. And he goes into the temple. Yes. But all he does is look around. Then he leaves the temple and rides back out of the city. The day ends, night falls, a new day begins. And then Jesus goes back into the city and stages the protest in the temple. Why is that important? What does it mean? Well, I think it means that the plans of God are never synaptic, meaning that the plans of God aren't ever immediate reactions to some kind of stimulus. The plans of God are based on observations that are gathered, reflected upon, then put into the form of a plan of action. Why do we need to know that? Well, if you really need me to say what is overtly evident, do you think that any of us might struggle with being a little too quick and reactive in our own lives? Do you think that there might be a reason that all it takes to spend thousands of dollars is one carefully crafted piece of clickbait in the corner of the page? You're casually browsing and, 
Oops, before you know it, you're the proud owner of a third of a share of an alpaca farm in Peru. Bing, you just bought an air fryer. Boing, you didn't know it, but starting this evening for the rest of your life, you're going to get calls from different numbers every day, leaving you messages about a warranty that's expiring for a thing that you don't even own. In the grand scheme of things, no, these types of things aren't going to radically alter your life. But what about the more important things? The propensity to hit send instead of save as draft before you took the time to weigh the pros and cons of your wording in an email that you typed while you were really angry. The way that you responded all too quickly when you and your partner were both tired and hurting at the end of a long day and you wanted them to know that you were hurting more and that you were more tired so you made the conversation all about me instead of we. Flying off the handle when your child can't possibly understand the ramifications of spilling their orange juice on your pants. But you've had a long day, so you raise your voice at them so that they will remember to never do that again. And for the first time in the life of your child, you see the look of confusion and fear in their eyes not knowing why the orange juice is that important. Or finally, for the executives out there on the other side of this lens, spending all of your time trolling the competition, no longer making plans out of a solid vision, but just a shallow reaction to the plans and pursuits of your competitors. I could go on and on, but this is where we live. This is what we do between waking and sleeping seven days a week. And you know what? It's hurting us. It's hurting our relationships. It's hurting our finances. It's hurting our physical and mental health. It's hurting our world. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he'd looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the Twelve. Do you have enough insight into yourself to know when enough is enough for today? Do you have enough sense of yourself to know when it's time to stop pushing to step back and to take a few deep breaths? Do you have enough wisdom to know when this life isn't all about you, but also about how you handling you impacts the world around you? Can you give your life more time to soak, to stew, to marinate. One of my favorite sacred texts of all time, this, this sacred text, this book, sits right next to my Bible. It's that important to me. Called the Tao Te Ching, or translated means the book of the way. 
says it like this. Fill your bowl to the brim and it will spill. Keep sharpening your knife and it will blunt. Chase after money and security and your heart will never unclench. Care about people's approval and you will be their prisoner. Do your work, then step back. This is the only path to serenity. What if living your life at 75 or 85 percent really is enough? What if your definition of 100 percent is 150 percent to everyone else? Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple, and when he had looked around at everything, as it was already getting late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. That matters as much today for you as it did for them then. There is a lesson here. What if that's the lesson of Palm Sunday to the crowds? That between stimulus and response, there is time. There is thought. There is introspection. There is planning. And my challenge for you today isn't just for you to hear that and say, oh, wouldn't that be nice if we could live like that? My challenge to you today isn't just to hear that, but to actually begin the difficult, intentional, internal work of shaping your life into a life like that. Do you want a world that isn't so fast and so instant? A world where there's more time to think and reflect before making life's big, big choices? I do too. So let's build a world like that together. Let us stop living lives that make the norm for our world to be moody and reactive and instantaneous. Let us build into the world better rhythms because it's getting late. And maybe, just maybe, this is what this pandemic has been trying to teach us all along. It's not the reason for the pandemic, but maybe it is one of the many lessons inside of it, trying to get us to see this about ourselves. To slow down, to stop treating the world and its inhabitants as disposable, to stop and reflect on the pace of the world that we are creating for our children. To stop living lives of consumption, frantically buying disposable things and disposable experiences, waste, excessive prosperity, concentrated wealth, living next to abject poverty and never even noticing it. We have done this. We have chosen this. And guess what? If we chose it, we can unchoose it. If we walked it forward, we can walk it back. We have an opportunity as our world begins to come out of this pandemic slowly to maintain what we've learned inside of it. 
that our relationships to and with one another matter. That our well-being is intimately tethered to the well-being of our neighbor. That we don't have to move a million miles an hour for the world to function as it should. That we can take some time when the hour is getting late to go away with those in our lives that we care about. To think, to laugh, to eat, to pray, to plan. We don't have to live lives reacting to everything. Perhaps that is the lesson of Palm Sunday. As we go into a time of reflection now, if you would like to receive communion along with us in your homes or wherever you're watching this from, you can take a moment to, to get some bread and juice or crackers and wine, whatever you have available. But as we pause to reflect on what we've heard here today for a few moments, let us pause and reflect and really pause and reflect to really ask ourselves some probing questions. Is my life moving forward at a pace that is unsustainable? And if all of the lives around me live at the pace that I'm living at, what kind of pace does that set up for our children? and our children's children 50, 100 years from now. May we consider that the condition of this world has not been imposed upon us without our own choosing, but it's been imposed on us by our own choosing. And may we ask God to fill our lives in such a way that the pace of the Spirit becomes the pace of our own lives. That the pace that we see in the life of Jesus becomes the pace of the lives we live here today. Let's take a few moments now to reflect, to pray, and to pause. Amen.
heart's arms are open wide Forgiveness was born with the precious blood of Jesus Christ My name is Linda. Welcome to CIB Just for Kids. So this week is a Palm Sunday. Um, Jesus thought that he was going. People thought that Jesus was going to come in, you know, this powerful man in horses with lots of soldiers and weapon and everything. But God chose to come in a donkey. A donkey symbolizes how he is humble and you know how he's peaceful. So people blessed him people welcomed him you know waving the palm leaves so even though God came in a peaceful way in a humble way but what he conquered was much more powerful he delivered people from the death so he, that was his the victory every time when we think of something that you know something is so powerful that people thought that he was going to give them this money this power he's going to rule over the world but he ruled over the death. That is the ultimate prize. So many times we think about our life, you know, we always have to see what is important. Is it the money, the power, or, you know, something material things? Or is it something that is, you know, much more than that? It is about getting closer to God and, you know, understanding what is the true meaning of Christianity. I hope you guys remember that and understand and prepare your heart for the Palm Sunday and also for the Easter. I have a fun little activity. This is the riddle. Um, just follow these words, you know, for, you know, go through the puzzle and see if you can solve this. I hope everyone will have a wonderful Palm Sunday. Thank you. Again, thank you for joining us this morning for this online broadcast. This coming Sunday, seven days from now, is Easter Sunday. And for Easter Sunday and Easter Sunday only, we are going to be gathering in person outside in front of the church on the church steps to celebrate Easter together. We will have some special music from Douglas and Pamela Lira and Douglas and Anna Marassi. I'll be sharing a special Easter message. We will have coffee and tea and hot chocolate and all of those things. We are asking though, if you do decide to come to this gathering, on Sunday at 9 a.m. that you please wear a mask, that you please respect social distancing guidelines. We will also be asking you to sign in with your name and your phone number for contract tracing purposes. We want everyone to be as safe as is humanly possible. If you don't feel comfortable coming to that gathering, that is fine with us. We're still going to be broadcasting here at 11 a.m. this Sunday. But if you would like to gather with us in person outside, you're invited to join us at 9 a.m. 5033 Wilson Lane in Bethesda, Maryland. The zip is 20814 and the church is a short walk off of the red line at Bethesda Station if you're taking the Metro. We look forward to seeing you then in person or at 11 a.m. online. And thank you again for joining us today. Thank you again for your support and your prayers uh, this past year during this pandemic. If you're not currently supporting our good work here in our nation's capital, we have a bunch of easy ways you can do that. You can find them at churchinbethesda.org. 
slash donate. It is our prayer that you have a week filled with peace, taking the necessary time to think through things, introspection, soaking, marinating, making plans with the spirits leading in mind. We pray that you would go in peace and that you would make peace wherever you go. We look forward to seeing you again soon. Amen. Thank you.